All right. In other news, uh, a lot of good shit happened this week. Like, we got some shit that we're going to talk about that's like, oh, that's kind of shitty and all that. But we got some good shit that happened this week. Yeah. Uh, the first thing that happened on uh, on our docket was the wonderful 101 remaster Kickstarter launched. And yes. it was funded in probably three hours. <laughs> if that. <laughs> yeah. If it, that. It was like super fun. So uh, Platinum has gone to Kickstarter to back their uh, wonderful 101 remaster. They were, it was around 50 grand is what they were wanting. Uh, at yeah, the time under of this, 50 grand. At the time of this recording, the Kickstarter is at 1.49 Okay, one mil. It's at one million four hundred ninety-two thousand dollars. Yep, that is, and it has twenty-six days to go. Yeah, that's it's it's, it's gonna hit one point five million. They it's gonna hit one point seven five million and uh, get all of their stretch goals is what it's gonna do. That would be best case scenario. Yeah, but. With any Kickstarter, it has different tiers that you can back. One would give you a digital version of the game. Uh, one would give you a physical version of the game. There's all, way, all the way up to, like, I think you could spend, like, $5,000 and you get a special edition 3D printed Wonder Red, like, statue. Yeah. But we don't give a shit about any of that. What's the tier that we care about, Chris, that you backed? The Whatever tier it was, and I don't remember. I'm looking like, at it right now. Uh, Like money wise because i'm pretty sure like no matter what tier you get you always have the option it's 102 dollar tier most... oh the 102 dollar tier gets yeah. it okay well that's that's the one i did and it was get blocked by kamiya uh it says not everyone has the privilege of being blocked on twitter by the illustrious hideki kamiya but that's all about the change this very special kickstarter tier kamiya himself will tweet will, will tweet directed at you and will block you forever and you called them out on Twitter. I did. I and told he blocked him to block you. me, you fucking coward. <laughs> and he did it. <laughs> I didn't get a, I didn't get a chance to see what he fucking wrote, but I don't even whatever. know like if he checked your pledge. Maybe he just blocked you. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> it was really really f fresh. Like I think the Kickstarter was only out for about an hour. Yeah. And I'm just like Yeah. Block uh, me. Some of the tier list or some of the uh, the stretch goals that they hit was their original fifty thousand dollars was for the Switch version, uh, the two hundred fifty thousand yep. dollar version was for a Steam version, the five hundred K version is the PlayStation Four version, the one mil landmark or the one mil mark would be a time attack mode at the one point five million uh, Luca's first mission. It's going to be a brand new two D side scrolling adventure starring a young hero, which Luca is one of the characters in. I'm not going to say any spoilers, but it's a little, it's a character in the game. Yep. And then you had the 1.75 million, uh, which will give you a remix soundtrack featuring a secret special guest that they have not named. I, I have a feeling that there's more stuff beneath that. Yeah. It looks like it's faded out a little bit. So, but the question for this, that we can all agree that anyone that listens to this podcast knows that we love wonderful one one and we're super happy about this. But there is some controversy around this because people are like, why is Platinum going to Kickstarter where Platinum is a de like a developed and respected developer? My my opinion on this it it changed it changed pretty hard. Um not to the point where I pulled back my pledge. Mm -hmm. Um but I'm in the middle of like writing something up for this, but I wanted to take the time to talk about it because it's relevant. Um, the thing is, is the estimated delivery for the base game, which I didn't notice at first because I went all the way down to like what I would expect I, me to pay because I usually put in a bit of money into Kickstarter when I, when right. I like a project, you know. Uh, and the estimated delivery date said November 2020, which to me, if you're porting a game from the Wii U to the Switch, makes sense. You need that time. It's roughly about six, seven, eight months, somewhere in that ballpark for them mm. to be able to port the game, market it, and then ship it out. But then I go back and I see what just the base digital version of the game will get you. It's scheduled for release in April. That means they've already done the work. Yeah. 
the game is ready. The game is the Kickstarter ready doesn't end out. until like March fifth. Yeah. Well. Yeah. Yeah. You're right. So like everything is done, and the issue behind this is that Kickstarter has come out and said we want to self-publish. We no longer want to go through other companies like Nintendo and Sega to release our product. So that was a big reason why sometime last year Tencent put in an undisclosed uh, yet rather large investment into Platinum Games, which everyone was really worried about because they're just mm -hmm. like, whoa, 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 China, China likes to censor shit. China likes to, to control yeah. the narrative on certain things. We saw it with Blizzard. We saw it with Red Candle Games when they tried releasing Devotion. Mm -hmm. like it's it's a it's a big deal it's serious but people are chasing that china money i mean you see it with epic games epic games major uh investors coming out of tencent and uh yep. i forget what the other one is called it starts with an n but not important but niantic no that's, that's i don't think the it's one... niantic niantic oh, yeah. is the one that does the pokemon uh and the harry no. potter yeah right well my thing is like yeah, they might have, like, they're well-developed and they're, like, well-distinguished as video game creators and all that stuff. But even in their Kickstarter video, they're like, hey, we know that we develop video games, but we're also, we're not publishers. So, like, we wanted to step out of our boundaries, like, out of our comfort zones and publish our first, you know, by ourselves. So they decided to go to Kickstarter. I, I don't have a problem with it. That's, at the end of the day, you have people that want a product like wonderful 101 and they decide to give the money if they want to or not. I think that there's a little bit of a double standard and I'm, I'm definitely guilty of taking a side in this because you know, I want the product I'm backing the Kickstarter, mm -hmm. but platinum games has a lot of goodwill that it's earned over the years with the quality of their games and the way that they reach out outside of Kamiya always blocking motherfuckers. Um, with with their PR control and the way that they, you know, they deliver their promises to their fans. So it's a little bit different when it comes to Platinum Games. But what if this was Blizzard? What if this was EA? What if this was Rockstar or any other developer? Um, let's, I mean, even look at other developers that aren't necessarily publishers. Um, if they came out here and went on Kickstarter while taking up a slot or taking the hype from another indie developer trying to get their name out there, you know, I think that that is a serious thing to consider because while they're not publishers, they're still considered, in my mind, a AAA developer. Maybe not necessarily AAA, maybe AA or, or A, even though those terms don't yeah. necessarily exist. But they're still like a high tier developer. They could have gone to anybody. When people heard that Wonderful 101 was being uh, re released, it wouldn't have mattered if it was Kickstarter or Nintendo or Sega or fucking uh, NIS America. It wouldn't have mattered. Just the fact that Wonderful 101 was coming back out because yeah. the game spoke for itself. It didn't matter what platform it was coming out on. But specifically when it comes to Kickstarter, what I'm afraid of is that now other developers and other publishers are going to look at this and say, this is another way that we can infiltrate the, the masses. Because whether you like to admit it or not, this is a glorified pre-order because the game is already made and ready to ship. But I'm going to counter, I'm going to argue with you. I, at the end of the day, the only reason, like, I'm all for anyone going on Kickstarter. Big developers, indie developers, anybody. At the end of the day, their stuff's not going to get funded if people don't want it, like, don't give the money to it. Okay. But when, we talk, when we're talking about developers that do not deliver, like, Kickstarter already has an issue with their developers not delivering on their promises. Mighty number nine. Yeah. It's the easiest one to go to. You know, they, they promise all these different things. Uh, what's that major fucking space game that's been out? Star Citizen. That's 
you know, that's like one of the most successful Kickstarters out there. I don't know if they're if like it's even out on beta. Like, I don't know a whole lot about the situation, but the game is definitely not fucking released. And they keep on adding more Kickstarter promises or, you know, crowdfunding goals. And the game has been in development forever. It's been in development hell. Yeah. You know? So that's why I say, as far as platinum games, they get a pass because they've built that goodwill. But what's going to happen when Ubisoft says, oh, you know, I know that Tom Clancy's Breakpoint didn't do too well last time, but you guys really want a Tom Clancy game. Here's a Tom Clancy game. Kickstart it. Maybe the game is already made and they want to see what their, you know, their interest is in it. Yeah. And then you create all these extra stretch goals that really don't cost a whole lot of money. Like even the 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 tier that I got, I got the um the eleven hundred the the eleven thousand yen one. I got the physical release remaster, a keychain, the soundtrack, a t-shirt, a uh, get blocked digital comic, a bridge digital soundtrack. I mean that's actually a really good tier for a hundred dollars. It's a good tier, but how much money is actually being spent on the product that's being delivered? There's a lot of profit that's being made off of this, and I I absolutely admit it. Like the game, how much does it cost for them to print out the game and put it out? The game probably once it goes retail will go for about 40, 50 bucks because yeah. it's a remaster from the Switch. A keychain, you can you can make a keychain for less than a dollar. The t shirt yeah, that we're you not, can We're not arguing a, profit margins on the tiers though. I'm I'm not. That's not the point that I'm making. But when you're looking at something like Ubisoft or EA coming out with shit like this, the product's already been made. They're now trying to boost up their the the potential profit by just adding a whole bunch of bullshit and putting it on Kickstarter because that's what people do. Because when it comes to Kickstarter, people are trying to develop the game at that time. Hey, I want to make this game. Here's a demo. Give me a year or two and I'll come out with something cool. And here's some like some benefits that I give you. Right. In this case, the game has already been made. The product has already been made. The, the extra that. bullshit on the side has already been made. This is a pre-order. And I think that that's what the issue that a lot of people are having with this. Now, again, at the end of the day, you as a Kickstarter, as a Kickstarter yep. backer, yep. you cannot get mad that you're like, oh, oh, this is a, and I'm not saying you specifically, I'm saying the, mm -hmm. the cumulative you, you can't get mad at a pre-order that you backed. You can yep. be like, oh man, it sucks that they're doing this, but I'm going to back it, but I don't agree with it. Y you can't play both sides of the field like that. I get you what you're really, saying. If you really don't want this because it's a pre-order and you're like, this to go is against what Kickstarter is, then mm -hmm. don't put the money in there. And then the Kickstarter will fail. And then they'll be like, okay, we don't need to do this. But right. That's not what people are doing. <laughs> they want I'm this doing. game and they don't care. I want this game too. Like, I want it. I, it's the, one of the best games that was ever on the Wii U. I'm just afraid that this could be a problem in the future. I'm, and I'm saying if it is a problem, the easiest way to do it for people that are, have a problem with it is don't kickstart mm -hmm. any of that shit. You have the choice to kickstart things if you want to or not. Yep. Now I, I I look at it and I feel dirty, but I'm I'm not. I going wouldn't there. fuck that. I don't feel dirty. <laughs> you're getting you're paying money for a game that you want mm -hmm. for a developer that you like. Yeah, and since you know it's a pre order, you're not gonna get burned on the game not coming out. Yeah. So but again, uh, okay. if it's anybody else. They go on the platform. At this point, we're going I got, in circles. I, yeah, I, I get you. I get you, what you're saying. You get what I'm saying. You get yeah. what I'm saying. I mean, I've been there. I've been through the good of Kickstarter with Shovel Knight and yep. a bunch of the other games. Like, I didn't kickstart Bloodstain, but Bloodstain was on there. A bunch of good games. I've also been on the other side with Mighty Number no. 9 and uh, Last Year and all these other games that I was just like, all right. I guess I got burned on this one. I'm out ten bucks. So yeah, <laughs> but only ten. That's that's the gamble, man. Sometimes Kickstarter's a gamble. So, but uh, at I the think, end of the I day, think... we're getting a wonderful 101 remake. I just want to play Wonderful 101. It's that's so it. good. Like 
I was actually thinking about booting up my Wii U and streaming it because I have it on the Wii U. Yeah, it's it still holds up. It's still a fantastic game. And I I, I hope that this really does prove to be successful for Platinum because they, they, they have three more projects that they're planning on releasing this year. Mm-hmm. So... I I I know it's never gonna happen, but I'm hoping for another Anarchy Reigns. Like you guys have pulled me into like Dude, that entire multiplayer. So I'm gonna send you the the uh, Hawkeye. Don't don't do that. Don't give me hope. <laughs> don't fucking do that to me, man. Because like if we got Wonderful 101 and our Anarchy Reigns, and we're getting Doom mm-hmm. Eternal, and PSO2 came out, Vanquish and Bayonetta, Yakuza. This is the best year for fucking video games in the last decade. Then. Yeah, it's it's pretty it's pretty good. It's pretty fucking good. It's pretty good. So, well, that's some of the good news that we.